May 15th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 25 from the New Testament. Now three days after Festus arrived in the province, he went up to Jerusalem from Caesarea. So the chief priests and the most prominent men of the Jews brought formal charges against Paul to him. Requesting him to do them a favor against Paul, they urged Festus to summon him to Jerusalem planning an ambush to kill him along the way. Then Festus replied that Paul was being kept at Caesarea, and he himself intended to go there shortly. So, he said, let your leaders go down there with me, and if this man has done anything wrong, they may bring charges against him. After Festus had stayed not more than eight or ten days among them, he went down to Caesarea And the next day he sat on the judgment seat and ordered Paul to be brought. When he arrived, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him, bringing many serious charges that they were not able to prove. Paul said in his defense, I have committed no offense against the Jewish law or against the temple or against Caesar. But Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, asked Paul, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and be tried before me there on these charges? Paul replied, I am standing before Caesar's judgment seat, where I should be tried. I have done nothing wrong to the Jews, as you also know very well. If then I am in the wrong and have done anything that deserves death, I am not trying to escape dying. But if not one of their charges against me is true, no one can hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then, after conferring with his counsel, Festus replied, You have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you will go. After several days had passed, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus. While they were staying there many days, Festus explained Paul's case to the king to get his opinion, saying, There is a man left here as a prisoner by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, The chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me about him, asking for a sentence of condemnation against him. I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to hand over anyone before the accused had met his accusers face to face and had been given an opportunity to make a defense against the accusation. So after they came back here with me, I did not postpone the case, but the next day I sat on the judgment seat and ordered the man to be brought. When his accusers stood up, they did not charge him with any of the evil deeds I had suspected. Rather, they had several points of disagreement with him about their own religion, and about a man named Jesus who was dead, whom Paul claimed to be alive. Because I was at a loss how I could investigate these matters, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and be tried there on these charges. But when Paul appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of His Majesty the Emperor, I ordered him to be kept under guard until I could send him to Caesar. Agrippa said to Festus, I would also like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he replied, you will hear him. So the next day Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and entered the audience hall, along with the senior military officers and the prominent men of the city. When Festus gave the order, Paul was brought in. Then Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are present here with us, you see this man about whom the entire Jewish populace petitioned me both in Jerusalem and here, shouting loudly that he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he had done nothing that deserved death, and when he appealed to his majesty the emperor, I decided to send him. But I have nothing definite to write to my lord about him. Therefore, I have brought him before you all, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after this preliminary hearing, I may have something to write. For it seems unreasonable to me to send a prisoner without clearly indicating the charges against him. God, I I know this story is about Paul and the deception of the Jews who are trying to persecute him. I get that that's what the story is about, but something just keeps racing through my heart when I'm reading about all of these these trials and the jail time and 
these non-Christians who are listening to all this happening. And I think about the Christians of today and how people from the outside are watching all this happen. You know, Festus brought in his friend, King Agrippa. King Agrippa really didn't have any power in the area. Um, but as a friend, you would say, gosh, I have this situation and I just am not really sure what to do with it. And so he lays it out in front of King Agrippa and, and his half-sister Bernice and, and says, here's what's going on. And and now we have three people hearing the story of these of these people talking about this this God and this Jesus person all fighting with each other gosh don't you think that that's how the world sees us that our churches and our ministries and our bible studies we can't even get along and people are watching us represent you in doing that again i'm not saying that paul is doing anything wrong far from it but i do feel this tugging on my heart that people are constantly watching us Constantly watching our actions, our perceptions, how we talk, what we talk about. That's where the whole idea of being a hypocrite comes from, from non-Christians. They look at our lives. They don't see the love that you have for us, that you have for other people, shining out through our day in and day out lives. They see us seeking attention from others. They see us desiring to sit in front of a TV and watch it because we need to chill out. (laughs) They see us going to inappropriate movies. Uh, They see us, oh, a variety of things, probably a bunch of stuff on Facebook. And I think this is the exact same thing where these three people who really hadn't even heard about you are now hearing a story about you where a bunch of people are just fighting over whether your son is dead or alive. And how sad that they don't even get an opportunity to get past that arguing and that 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 festering that's happening between the Jews and Paul. They don't even get a chance at a relationship with you to even know that you exist and, and what you exist for. More importantly, what they exist for, which is to glorify you. So God, today I just pray that we watch our actions, that what we do and what we don't do have an incredible effect on other people and whether they're willing to listen about the word of God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.